Cool. But let's focus on the FMCG and consumption space now. In Q4, volume-led growth is expected to return in the FMCG sector with a gradual improvement in rural demand. Now, according to Prabhuda Sliradha, the demand is expected to be mixed in the consumption space while margins will improve in Q4. Uh, we have uh, Kumar Rajgopalan, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Retailers Association of India and Amni Agarwal, the Head of Research at Prabhuda Sliradha, joining in now to tell us what to expect. Um, Amnish, let me start with you. If you can just lay down for us, you know, the preface to this discussion. What is the kind of growth that we're looking at? Have you seen a recovery in the rural market, especially in the consumption piece? And which are the stocks that could be the biggest beneficiaries of this? There is a lot which is talked about rural recovery from quite some time. But uh, our understanding suggests that there is no full-fledged rural recovery which is playing out as of now. Because there are, a, for example, a discretionary pack in the rural India is under pressure not only in consumer staple but in consumer discretionary durables etc. as well. And in case of, you can say, the your staples also, there are certain, you can say, items in food products or maybe your... Uh, detergents etc which are showing uptake but so in rural India I think it is not a broad based uptake or green shoot which are visible because of you can say the inflation which has been there yes of course the earlier down trading is somewhat winding up but uh, there is no clear uh, visibility as of now and a lot depends upon how this you now crop goes and uh, how the monsoon uh, season plays out. Okay, that's important. You're saying that there's no clear visibility on any improvement in rural demand and there's still a bit of uncertainty. Kumar Rajgopalan, who's the Chief Executive Officer at Retailers Association of India, is also with us. Uh, Kumar, would you concur that uh, there are no concrete signs or evidence of a pickup in demand just yet in the rural market? And can you break it down for us in terms of, you know, what you're seeing in retail trends, both in urban and rural? Any divergence in trends across regions, north, south? Yeah, hi. Good morning. I think uh, I'd agree with what Amnish is saying to some extent because uh, we've uh, seen that through the year, the uh, real growth has happened in the mid to higher uh, segment of products, which means the uh, price points of mid to higher segments. The lower price point items, especially in the discretionary, has not done as all that well. I mean, overall, the retail market grew by about 18% last year for the, uh, for the modern retail. But uh, the, the, the issue has definitely been on the lower price point items. And I think that's seen across various levels. Some of the items that did well, some of the categories that did well, definitely sports and leisure, athleisure has been doing very well. QSR has been doing quite well. Uh, people do want to go out and eat. Uh, I, uh, garments, when it came to occasion wear, has done well during occasions. The non-occasion times, especially when it came to lower price point items, have not done well. The rural sector, I think, still needs to be really reached out, and I'd, uh, I'd agree, because the lower price point there, again, is the question. The, higher, the mid to higher price point, I think those consumers are willing to buy, but they also buy from the larger cities. So they are willing to go to the cities and buy lots from wherever they are, if they are well-to-do. So that is that question mark that still is there. I think that impact of inflation of the 10% was definitely seen all through. All right. Uh, hi, good morning, Mr. Raj Gopalan. Uh, you know, we have big state elections coming up uh, this year. Is that a factor? How do, uh, you know, consumer trends normally uh, phase out uh, when uh, we have state elections and large states as well? Yeah, that's, that's a very nice question, actually, uh, because uh, we hope that there would be lots more money, disposable money in the hands of people. Uh, and you'll need to bring in some policy level decisions to make sure that people feel... Uh, the ability to buy, or at least they have this confidence that they are going to be in a better position going forward. Retail is all about expectations of where one would go the next year and the year after that. So the election should hopefully put some money back into the infrastructure and various other systems because people will be very busy to try and make sure that uh, that expenditure, the whole infrastructure, the ability to try and make the last person be employable is all going to happen. So we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, but one good thing about what's happening all around is that uh, there is DBT, there is lots more accountability. So whatever is being seen is being seen in real terms and not just about doles. So I think that's going to be interesting. Okay. Uh, Amnish, from the universe that you cover, what are the companies where you're seeing, you know, both revenue growth as well as margin expansion in this quarter? 
and perhaps uh, stocks where there continues to be a little bit of valuation headroom as well? You see, in terms of volume growth, I think in this quarter, paint companies should do well because the trends of generally in paints, they are sustaining uh, at least till the end of the March. So paint is one segment where we should see good volume growth. Then ITC should have good volume growth. In general, food companies uh, selectively should have good, uh, good volume growth. Liver should be able to give you something like uh, mid, mid single digit kind of a volume growth. So I think these are some of the pockets. QSR again should be mixed with some pressure definitely on companies like say Jubilant Foodworks and uh, Westlife uh, sorry Jubilant Foodworks and uh, Burger King Westlife I think should outperform the peers in QSR space so broadly I think paints selective staples and uh, selective you can say QSRs they, they should do they should do well as far as margins are concerned I think clearly at this point of time it is again very very uh, you can say company specific factor the companies which are more uh, using the raw material which are crude linked and where which have seen softening in the past three to six months for example the paint companies the companies like say PD light so they should gain some of the companies like for example liver which have got large uh, gains to come uh, due to reduction in the prices of various <clears throat> crude linked items as well as palm oil they should gain Britannia should uh, should report uh, YY margin expansion, although QOQ it, it looks difficult. So I think broadly if you look, I think there would be reasonably good quantum of companies which will show margin uh, expansion. But in some of those cases also, one can't rule out some margin Oops, so, okay, I think there's some issue with uh, the audio over there. We'll come back to you in a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, Mr. Rajagopalan, anything that you want to leave us with in terms of what some trends could be in the consumption space? Anything that we missed out on? Any pockets that are perhaps looking good to grow from here on? Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the good news is that the customers are back in the stores. Uh, I think they are, they are wanting to buy online, they are wanting to buy offline, both is happening. Omnichannel has become the way of the day. So for it gone are the days when one would say only one channel is going to, to, to grow. I think both the channels will grow. Uh, trust is becoming very, very important for buyers who are buying whether offline or online. So you would see that lots more D2C brands are trying to put offline stores also there because customers want to know whom are they buying from. Gone are the days when people would say that uh, easy returns is very happy. Uh, status because that's convenience but frankly any customer who is returning is not very happy with what they got and that's going to get questioned through the year uh, if there are lots of returns in any of the e-commerce websites it's going to be a big question mark uh, the, uh, the the growth that we expect will hopefully be in the garment sector it's not done as great as it should be and i think that discretionary item is the first thing that gets to kind of see the results. Footwear is growing very well, and I think that should really continue as we go ahead uh, overall. Uh, QSR should continue its growth path. Again, I think that's also done really well so far. CDIT is going to be quite interesting because consumers are going to stores and buying. We are seeing new brands getting launched. But uh, there is also this question, how much is good enough? So there are people who are questioning whether consumer durables and IT products are really going to grow that more than 20% or is it not? We'll have to wait and watch on that account. One important part that we'll need to wait and see this year in this country especially is this concept around the open network for digital commerce. I think uh, there's a lot that's happening around that. I think this is going to democratize digital commerce and hopefully it should take in the kind of trajectory that UPI has taken across for the payments in ecosystem. And that's going to be really interesting for consumers as well as for the overall market in India. Okay, all right. We'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in and uh, speaking to CNBC TV 18. Let's do one.